straight wifey had to do it is what he's saying to save everyone so this is a story that's been trending and you know because of the blizzard and the uh very severe severe bad blizzard storm that has uh swept you know the midwest and the east and a lot of people have already uh you know lost their lives and a lot of people have been trapped and stranded and the authorities and medical uh personnel first responders were not able to get to a lot of people and so this is uh, a man that uh broke into a school uh to shelter more than 20 people from the blizzard now as a deadly and historic blizzard barreled through erie county new york last weekend some residents found themselves in a dire scenario stranded in howling snow with nowhere to go their cars dwindling in gas supply with police unable to come to the rescue and let me stop right there there was a lot of people excuse me stranded in their cars you know and they had their cars running and some of them was on a fourth tank of gas or even barely that much gas in their cars uh it was so cold outside we've heard numerous stories of like the young man uh with the mind of a 10 year old uh that a woman rescued the, the boyfriend carried him to, into their home and she pleaded for help on social media trying to get help for him he was actually yet straight away or walked away from his group home uh, and he uh he had frozen hands and they and uh there was a dire need to get him to the hospital um you know a dire need to get him to the hospital to save his tips of his fingers and then you had uh, a young woman lost her life getting in her car traveling in uh you know unprotected winter gear there was no winter gear i believe that uh, she was wearing and she did not survive and her family came out and spoke about you know their loss and so it's been so many different uh losses and situations and so he actually went door to door even offering to give the homeowners 500 dollars to sleep on their floor uh to save him and a friend from uh the blizzard he didn't want to die and sometimes you know we have to you know remain calm even though it's hard to remain calm in these type of dire situations you know and do what we need to do and look at and worry about the consequences later and he he didn't worry about he knew what he was doing he thought about it but he also knew that what he was about to do was going to save other people from many people from losing their life and so uh there was he was a mechanic in the town of cheek tawaga who uh cheek tawaga who had ventured out to help a trapped friend but instead got caught in the snow himself and then over the course of the night he would be turned away like i said by several people he begged for help so eventually committing a final act of desperation to save himself and more than 20 others from the brutal storm his night began at 6 p.m when he got a call from a friend who had become stuck in a quickly mounting snow he said i'm the only person he knew that would come over so i figured i would go get him now um he continued on you know uh there is um uh, you know a video out there of this you know uh that you know the authorities have spoken out on as well uh you know defining him as a hero but he drove his friend weaving between abandoned vehicles that littered the road suddenly he saw a young man named mike walking in sneakers and wrapped in a light jacket he told mike to hop in the truck to escape the cold and as he drove past snow drifts several feet tall whitey said his truck became stuck twice the first time he was able to shovel his way out but the second time felt hopeless he was trying to dig himself out but the snow was coming down just as fast as he was shoveling he said with his clothes soaking wet and only a quarter of a tank of fuel left excuse me he started to grow concerned he was fearing for his life like he said he went knocking on door to uh, uh, door to door of houses 
to see if anyone would give him shelter. He went to 10 houses, offering $500, as I stated, uh, to spend the night on their floor, and all of them turned him away. He pleaded with them, please, please, can I sleep on the floor? I'm in fear for my life. And they say, nope, I'm sorry, he said. Feeling defeated, he, he uh, Whitney tried to walk back to his truck, but became lost in the blustery wind and thick snow. His vision is getting foggy, my body is cramping up, and I'm fearing for my life, he said. Finally, he saw a light glint in the distance, the same blinking light he remembered parking his truck next to. After marching back to the truck, he called the police but was told that due to the dangerous storm conditions, they couldn't come to rescue him. He also learned that the friend who had called him for help had been rescued by authorities. With the gas running precariously low, he was concerned but tired, so he tried to take a nap. At around 11 p.m., he heard a knock at the car window and opened the door to find Mary, an elderly woman, who said she had been stuck in her car since 4 p.m. and needed help. He told her to get in the truck, too. But by the next morning, his truck had run out of gas, leaving the trio to huddle in Mary's van, which was also running low on fuel. So eventually, Mary needed to use the bathroom. It was then that he, sensing she felt embarrassed, looked at his phone's GPS and noticed that a school edge academy was nearby. He says, I'm going to go to that school. So he did. And he's going to break into that school, which he did because he knew they had a heat. They had heat and a bathroom in there because he and you know he actually said he didn't leave until he made sure everyone was okay so basically using an extra set of brake pads he smashed through a window of the school so he could open the front door and let mike and mary in with the security alarm blaring he walked outside in the immediate area and there are a lot of older people that are stranded in their cars one person had a dog and I get them all into the school. At this point, I have about 10 people in that school. He estimated their ages range between 20 and 70. And with the group settled in the school, he scavenged for cereal and apples in the cafeteria, managed to turn off the alarm and found mats in the gym for everyone to sleep on. Everyone is just so happy to be in the school and to be warm and have food. On Christmas morning, uh, he and the others were able to use snow blowers from the janitor's closet to free their cars from the mounds of snow. <laughs> he described himself as a religious man. Uh, he views the ordeal as a blessing in disguise. And his, he said if just one person had taken him up on his plea for shelter that night, he would not have saved all those people. And that's pretty true. So sometimes the rejection is for the protection of others. And that's what it seems like is that although he was rejected, God was going to use him uh, to protect others that needed help. And God chose him. Okay. And so one man who he turned away saw him blowing, uh, uh, snow blowing the cars and approached him in tears to apologize, saying he couldn't sleep that night knowing he had denied him shelter. So he stayed at the school until 8 p.m. on Christmas. He didn't leave until he made sure everyone was okay, adding that they started a group chat to stay in touch. Before he left, he made sure to leave a note apologizing for the break-in, which police found when they were eventually able to respond to the alarm. Uh, wifey set off when he entered the school. He wrote, to whom it may concern, I'm terribly sorry about breaking the school window and for breaking in the kitchen. It read, got stuck at 8 p.m. Friday, slept in my truck with two strangers, just trying not to die. It, conti uh, it continued. There were seven elderly people also stuck and out of fuel. I had to do it to save everyone and get them shelter and food and a bathroom. He signed the letter, Merry Christmas, Jay. Now, the Chief Tawaga police were able to find Whitey with the public's help after sharing his note and surveillance camera images. <coughs> Excuse me. Police Chief Brian Gold told CNN that Whitey was in a section of town that they were having a hard time getting to. The chief called Whitey's actions heroic, an example of the sense of community among people in the area. We were absolutely shocked to see that he had over 20 people in the school and two dogs. So in the end, uh, it was 20 people. He started off with 10, but it wound up being 20 people in the school, not just one dog, but two dogs. And he goes on to say not only a heroic, heroic action, but just an overall good person. He definitely saved some lives that day, Gold said. So he did save some lives. So he will not, far as I know, he will not be held accountable for breaking into the school because he really did save not only his life, but he thought of others. And again, you know, the people, the homeowners that rejected him, 
it turns out to be a blessing in disguise because God was using the rejection of the homeowners for the protection of him and others, for him to be able to save others. And he did that by breaking in a school and getting them into some shelter and even some food in the cafeteria. So sometimes the the, uh, the rejection is for the protection. And so sometimes we have to look at it, you know, when we're being rejected, God has a greater plan for us and he's really protecting us and he protect, he's using you to protect others. So with that being said, thank you all for tuning in. God bless you all on today. Uh, thank you so much. Again, uh, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber and leave your respectful comments below. If you even have any comments, I thank you all for again for just stopping by. God bless you all. Peace out.